You know who has had a really, really good season this year? Like, it's ridiculous how strong of a player this guy has been. Yeah, you already know. You read the title. You saw the thumbnail. Today, we're heading over to the San Jose Sharks and going over a guy who is at a point per game this season, who has been playing very well for the Sharks this season, and who has, in my own fantasy league at least, been literally one of the best damn players in the entire hockey league. Today we're talking about Mikhail Granlund, who, at the time of recording this audio, is ranked 13th overall in my fantasy league. Now I get it, my fantasy league isn't really a metric for success that's accessible to the general public, but this guy's been very good. Sure, he plays on San Jose, but he is still a point-per-game guy with 14 points in, you guessed it, 14 games played. He has scored himself a total of six goals and eight assists, and the best part about Mikhail Granlin as a San Jose Shark is that he actually was at a much higher points per game about a week ago, week ago, because he went three games in four games with scoring zero points as of late. He had a goal in the Vancouver Canucks defeat, but other games included a pointless game against Columbus and then a pointless game against Chicago, as well as a pointless game against L.A., so earlier on in the season, Mikhail Granlin was at 13 points in 10 games played. That was over a point per game. Now he's regressed to a point per game. It matches the 60-point campaign he had last season with the Sharks in 69 total games played. Mikhail Granlin has had a pretty established NHL career, and I think a lot of people have grown to respect Granlin ever since making his debut with the Minnesota Wild all the way back in 2012-2013. In that area, he became an immediate middle six threat, he had multiple near 70-point seasons with the Wild, and at this point in his career, he was, what, 25 years old-ish? In that middle-aged, middle-range territory? So a lot of fans around the NHL were starting to take notice that this guy was very good. And after a few other years where he struggled a little bit in Nashville, and then he got sent over to Pittsburgh, he struggled even more over there. He was sent over to San Jose in the infamous Eric Carlson trade, and he has been there ever since. I think it's fair to say that Mikhail Granlund is one of the best players in the San Jose Sharks organization, what with Tyler Toffoli and Fabian Zetterlund also going out there and scoring points, and with Macklin Celebrini's return, there certainly is an amount of talent that does exist on this forward core. But when it comes to Mikhail Granlund, he's in a spot where his current contract sees him making five million bucks till the end of this season. Does he stay in San Jose? Does he re-sign? Does he want to be on a team where he is pretty much the best player on the team? He gets all the power play minutes, he gets all the shots, he gets all the goals, and he does such an amazing job at doing everything else too. He hits, he blocks shots, he gets points on the power play, he gets all this deployment because there isn't really anybody else in San Jose other than those aforementioned names. Or does he decide to maybe go elsewhere? He goes to a team that's more competitive. He signs a cheaper deal with a team that will give him less playing time and less power play time, but a team that might actually be a better results team compared to San Jose. Tyler Toffoli did the first thing. He decided, hey, I'm just going to get all the money that I can. I'm going to go to the Bay Area, baby. Let's go. Draymond Green, hit me up. And that's why Tyler Toffoli took his talents to San Jose this previous offseason. He's making a lot of money. He doesn't care if the team sucks. Plus, once Macklin Celebrini and Will Smith and William Eklund all hit their primes, there's going to be a lot more to cheer for with this team. Maybe Tyler Toffoli is still on it at that time. Who really knows? But Mikhail Granlin has that choice to make. So, when it comes to the Montreal Canadiens, this is where we dive into an article published on TVA Sports from November 4th, asking if the solution for Montreal is in this Mikhail Granlund asset. I'll leave a link in the description to this article that goes out there and dives into the idea. The problem with the Montreal Canadiens are numerous, but the state of the club's center is currently at the top of the list. On Monday, it was Jake Evans, normally used to supporting roles in the third or fourth line, who piloted Montreal's second offensive line at center alongside of Newhook and Slavkovsky. The article essentially talks about how the Canadians need more centers because Doc and Suzuki by themselves, it's not enough, and how there isn't really enough security there, and whether or not Ivan Demidov could be the guy, who really knows? We had spoken about the idea of Slavkovsky being a center as well to mixed and varying responses in the comments section, but this is where the article dives into alternatives. 
According to Jean-Charles Lajoie and Tony Marinero, during the segment of Le Colisee on the broadcast JIC show on TVA Sports, the two hosts pointed out the performances of several players, including Kirby Doc, Dvorak, and Newhook. If Jake Evans is there in the second line center spot, it's because Doc isn't doing the job. It's because Dvorak isn't doing the job. It's because Kapanen isn't doing the job. New hook too. That's when Marinero came up with the idea to solve the problem. Get an established center from a team that's floundering in the NHL underworld, like Mikhail Granlund of the San Jose Sharks. If the Canadians really want to be in the mix, wouldn't it be good to identify a top two center from teams that are doing badly in the West, who might like to have a young player or draft picks and get rid of a player? I'll give you an example. The Sharks have the worst record in the NHL. Mikhail Granlin is in the last year of his contract. He's a good offensive player, he can help the Canadians at second center, he's not the best, but he's better than what they have right now. Granlund is in his second season with the Sharks. Last year, he had 60 points in 69 games played. Very nice. In 24-25, he had 14 points in 13 games. Now up to 14 and 14. So, this is our idea. The Montreal Canadiens center core kind of stinks, and a lot of guys aren't really reliable enough to be used consistently in that position. Other than Nick Suzuki, you have a rotating cast of guys. So, would Mikhail Granlund as a trade option be appropriate for the Montreal Canadiens? I'll say this right here. From San Jose's POV, if they can guarantee within Granlund himself that, hey, he's not gonna stay. If Granlund commits elsewhere and he says, sorry, Greer, sorry San Jose, sorry Celebrini, but I don't want to stick around with your team, you can just trade me to wherever and I'll accept. If there is some sort of a camaraderie there where he allows the team to know that he's not going to resign, then the Sharks have a lot of good opportunities here to flip this guy for value. I wouldn't say the Sharks are looking for immediate win-now kind of assets, so getting younger guys, getting players that could help transition alongside a Macklin Celebrini, which is exactly what the Montreal Canadiens have a lot of, it would make sense if you were to trade a guy like Granlin, for example, for, I don't know, uh, Owen Beck or something? Maybe throw in Christian Dvorak just to make the trade even itself out from a roster management point of view? Of course, San Jose would need to get some value out of that. They'd need to see what the future is with these players. And for Montreal, you would also have to kind of guarantee that Granlin's able to stick around, too. It'd be very difficult for the Canadians to trade away some meaningful prospect or something for a guy like Granlin, who is probably going to be pretty good, and then have him walk away in free agency. You would not want to see that happen if you're Kent Hughes in 2024 managing a Montreal Canadiens team that has been so subpar compared to the expectations that fans are starting to get reckless. You can't be losing out on assets like that for free. But if you're a San Jose Sharks fan, the ultimate question is out here to you. If you were to trade Mikhail Granlund, what is it that you would want to receive in exchange? What kind of asset from the Montreal Canadiens entices you the most? What kind of a prospect do you think is valuable here? If you're a Canadiens fan, do you think the idea of trading for Mikhail Granlund is even reasonable to think about? Is it something that you want to explore? Is he too old and too uncertain to come back that you actually think it's not worth it to make a trade? Send away some prospects or whatever for a guy who will help the team out in 2024-2025. Maybe this could be an early sort of quick swing trade. You trade for Mikhail Granlin, you build his stock up a little bit, and then you trade him again at the deadline for something else. That's very risky, considering I think Granlin is getting the best minutes he'll have in San Jose. I don't necessarily think the Canadians are going to give him more minutes or necessarily more opportunity, so it's really a dilemma here. I mean, Tony Marinero spoke about it. The JIC folks went out there and talked about it, which is why I thought it was interesting enough to bring up here on this video. So Habs fans, I'll leave a link in the description to the TVA Sports video clip and article that goes out there and talks about this. If you are in fantasy hockey, check out where Mikhail Granlin is in your rankings, because for me, he is literally a top 20 guy. That's with the total as well. If you go by averages, he's actually a little bit lower because his recent games actually did not have too many things that were good. Not as many assists or power play points or blocks as he had had in prior games, but still, he's been fantastic, and I think there's a lot of value here in Mikhail Granlin. It's just whether or not you would want to see him on the Canadians. That's another question. So, thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this British Astros 99, and bye.